All right, folks, welcome back. Today, it's finally time to talk about digital scales. This video has been a long time coming. Kept putting it off because I didn't really have a good recommendation to make. And I'll be up front with you here. I really still don't have a scale I'm 100% happy with. But as you can see, I've got 16 different cheap digital scales. Well, there's a couple that aren't so cheap, but we'll talk about those as we go along. But most of these are cheap scales from Amazon. And I'll tell you what, let's not bury the lead here. Let me show you my three favorites. All right, here they are. These two right here, which look pretty much exactly the same, are from Trueway. One is called the Reloader Marksman, and the other is called the Lux Mini. This guy over here is from Bryfit. It doesn't really have a catchy name, but it's a 50 gram scale. And we'll get into some confusion with Bryfit. I've got four of their scales, and you have to be very careful to pick the right one when, when uh, yeah, when it comes to those guys. So let's start out with the two, the two true ways. This is the, yeah, the reloader. The first thing I hate about it is the cover. It comes off like this. And it's like, what in the world do you do with that? I guess you can sit it back there somewhere. I don't know. Here's the other one, same exact lid. These are both 100 gram scales. And if we flip them on, you'll see that they read in 0.1 uh, grain increments. So like if we throw a 0.5 grain check weight on there, you see 0.5 grains. And back over here to the other one, 0.5 grains. Now the difference between these two scales are accessories. This is the Lux Mini, which you have to be careful. There's a, there's a big Lux that looks exactly the same, but it's a one kilogram or, you know, a thousand gram scale. That's a completely different animal. This is the Lux Mini. So these two scales are exactly the same. Here's my favorite feature about them. If you press and hold the mode button, you'll see it comes up and says A-U-O-F-F, -F, auto off. That just disabled the auto off feature. So let's do the same thing over here with this guy. And now these two scales will stay on until their batteries die. That's a huge frustration with a lot of the small miniature scales is they have a quick auto off and it really interrupts your flow as you're reloading and, and measuring powders. The Lux Mini comes with nothing. It comes with a calibration weight, and I think that's pretty much it. The Reloader Marksman, however, comes in this really nice box, like really, really sturdy box. And it's got like, you know, magnetic latch on it, and then it opens up, and I don't have anything in here. Let me, let me throw one in there. It comes with a powder pan that's actually the correct size for reloading work. That's a huge frustration when buying some of these cheap scales off Amazon. They either don't come with any pan whatsoever or they come with an itty bitty tiny little pan that's just too small for reloading. So the Marksman comes with a pan, comes with a nice box that should last for years of storing it and stuff. And other than that, I found these two functionally identical. So let's go ahead and get that guy out of the way. Now the problem with these is they're the price. The Marksman is currently going for $44.99. I bought this one six or eight months ago and I paid $40.85. And unfortunately that $44.99 price tag we're getting right now has been stable looking at like Amazon pricing history. It's been that way since around July. So that's almost six months. The price hasn't budged and it's been $44.99. This one's been on the market a little bit, a little while. So like a year and a half, they were a year and a half ago, they were $34.99. So they bumped up in price, but listen, I'm telling you, finding a pan like this is not easy. They are available over at Midway for around 10 bucks, a very similar pan to this. It's the, it's the Redding powder pan number two that, that's very similar to this and it's 10 bucks. So it's worth a few extra bucks just because of, well, for one, like I said, the nice box for storage and a good powder pan that comes with it. But if you've already got a powder pan, that might not matter for you. The Lux Mini is currently going for $34.99. So 10 bucks cheaper. But the pricing history at Amazon shows that this one, as recently as just two months ago, was going for $19.84. And then it bumped up to $34.99 about a month ago. So if you're wanting the Lux Mini, you might watch that price and wait for a dip. So my biggest downside is that lid that's a pain in the butt. And also the pan going all the way to the edge, you've really got to be careful because that's the fastest way to kill one of these cheap digital scales is to lay something heavy on the load sensor. So the load sensor is not really protected and it would be very easy to tip something onto it and screw up your scale. One thing I really like is here's a 20 grain check weight, 20.0. 
I've found that it reads very accurately even all the way out to the edge. So 20.0 on that corner, 20.0 on that corner, perfect on that corner, and it'll be the same here on the back corner. So you don't have to obsess about getting things perfectly centered. Of course, that's always the best thing to do is to get it centered right above that load cell thingy. But the Marksman and the Lux seem to give you some wiggle room there. It's not the fastest scale, like it's not the snappiest scale. You put the weight on there and it does take just a second to give you your number, but it's not annoyingly slow. Some scales are just extremely annoyingly slow. So I wish these were a little bit cheaper, but they're not. And speaking of cheaper, let's bring in the Bryfit. There you go, B-R-I-F-I-T. This one also had, tell you what, let's fire it up, get it, uh, get it warming up a little bit. This scale is $16.99. So it definitely represents the best value that I've found. The lid for it is a little bit annoying. It can act as a windscreen, you know, you can, it's got this little thing where you can put stuff down in there, whatever, but for reloading where we need to take a big powder pan on and off, it's best to just remove it. Let me see if I can raise up my camera. There we go, that's a little bit better angle. And that's another reason why You'll probably see me using these more often than this guy, just because with the angled screen, it's easier for me to get them on camera, and these really take that overhead view. So if you if you reload sitting down a lot, the angled screen might be something else to uh, keep in keep in mind. Now, unfortunately, this scale you cannot turn off the auto off feature. It has a three minute timeout, and that's what that's what I've gotten used to because here's you know here's the old faithful. This is the one I've been using for several years that isn't available anymore. There are scales that look like this. Actually, here's one of them, and here's another one of them. Let me flip these on really quick. Now, you'll see Old Faithful here reads to 0.1 grains, where the newer versions, which are the only ones that I know of that are available, read to 0.02 grains. Like, there, if we put a little check weight on there, you can see 20.00. I was hoping it might read a couple tenths off so I could illustrate what I'm talking about. Nope, they're, there you go. And they're pretty darn accurate. They do a pretty good job. But when you have that extra digit, you know, you go from reading one tenth of a grain to 0 0.02 grains, it's easy for a guy, a guy like me to get obsessive, try and get things a little bit more perfect than they really need to be. But otherwise, these are, these are really good scales. If you've bought one of these recently that reads in 0.1 grain increments. Please let me know down in the comments. I wanna get one, I wanna see if it's the same as the old one. But a lot of people have bought the, the newer version as well, and, and they're not bad. Still a solid choice. Now back to our 50 gram Bry fit. Let's turn it back on. It uh, auto shut off after three minutes, like I mentioned. This one also reads to 0 0.02 grains. So 20.00. Here's the thing, I think everyone should own a set of check weights. This is the Lyman check weight set. I'll have links for everything I'm talking about down in the description and probably I'll pin a comment. These are not cheap. I'll tell you what, let me see what the current price is. Yeah, they actually have two kits now. I've got the old kit that comes in a little thing like this and they've got a newer set that comes in a little plastic, looks like a little miniature ammo box almost. And this kit right now is 32 bucks and the new kit is 38 bucks. So not cheap. But I'm telling you, I think everybody should own them. So there was 20 grains. Here's here's another 20 to make 40. Yeah, got it. Got a little bit sideways. And I'm using tweezers because 0 0.02 grains is the, about the weight of a fingerprint. I wiped all of these down with 99% isopropyl alcohol, and wiped my tweezers down, and even wiped my fingers down because the tiniest little thing can make a difference. 47 should be 57. 59, 59.5, and 60.5. Now you see, my like this would be basically 60.6, right? So this one's reading a tenth high. So this one might need a little bit more warm up and a calibration to get the numbers right. That's one thing I'll say. All of the scales I've got are all, every single one of them is accurate. There's not one I can show you that you know reads two tenths off or something like that. If you warm it up, if you calibrate it, if you make sure you don't have air currents, air currents make a huge deal. Your scale is gonna be affected by the slightest amount of moving air. I've had some that read a little bit wonky when the batteries start getting low. 
The, uh, I've noticed pretty much all of these are not good at alerting you of low battery. I usually notice like the backlight is a little dimmer than it should be and the scale might start reading a little bit wonky. Fresh batteries and everything's back to normal. Another thing that affects the scale a ton is vibrations, which is why I love this. I've got a rubber mat on my bench that really helps to insulate those vibrations. Another thing is electrical interference. Like uh, if you've got fluorescent lighting above your bench or you're just close to other electronics, you have to always keep that in mind as well. Luckily, I've got fluorescent lights above my bench. They've never given me any problems whatsoever. So I'll tell you what, we've had this guy up and running here. Let's run it through a calibration real quick and then we'll run back through the check weights and see if it still reads a little bit high. I think we press and hold the units button come up, comes up and says Cal, and then says 50. So we need a 50 gram check weight. Pass, and it reads 50. So that's a 50 gram check weight. Here's a 20. Perfect. And here is a 10. Perfect. So let's switch back over to grains, which on this scale is five clicks. So let's start small and work our way up, because a lot of these scales or a lot of scales in general, have got a hard time picking up tiny things. They want to be at zero. And this scale in particular is one of the very worst at coming off of zero and starting to give you actual readings. It's something I've complained about for a long time, but the problem is all of these scales have the problem to some degree or another, and I've just got to learn to live with it, I guess. So let's take that half grainer off. And now look, it screwed up our zero. So let's hit tear. Here's a one grainer. Let's see if it can get that guy. Yep, the one grainer was mostly okay. Here's two more. This should take us to five. This should take us to 10. This should take us to 20, 40, 60, and 60.5. Perfect. So a little bit of warm up time, running through a calibration, and we're right on the money. Now, one thing, this, this scale's a little bit snappier like it gives you the reading a little bit quicker than like this guy. And I'm not sure if it'll come across on camera, but hopefully like this one, you see it counting up for a split second before you actually get your reading. Uh, yeah, there it is, but it's still, still not too bad. And that one's just a little bit snappier. So this one, pretty accurate, pretty snappy. The ergonomics of it are good. Like it's not too tall. You can slide a trickler over it, no problem, and have plenty of room for even your biggest pans. Yeah, so it's pretty good. And did I mention this one's $16.99, right? So $16.99 versus 45 bucks versus 35 bucks. I'll tell you, this, this scale here reminds me a lot of this scale, if you remember it. Yeah, one of these. It's got the little adjustable feet. I did find one seller still selling these on Amazon, but they've become pretty hard to find. This was a little bit confusing because when I bought this one, it read to 0 0.02 grains, and then a lot of viewers were buying them and they were reading to 0.1 grains. It's, frust it's frustrating. You never know what you're gonna get, and they rarely include information that's specific for reloaders. That was the, actually the, the reason why I first bought this one, is because this is the first one I saw that was specifically aimed at reloaders. It came with a pan that was useful. So it was a little bit more expensive, but I thought, hey, you know, we're finally being recognized as a group of consumers here by these Amazon sellers. And if you go to the True Way website, they actually have a whole section where they talk about their scales for reloading. So I also bought this one, the Reloader Sharpshooter. Now this one comes in a nice plastic case, like, you know, it's not exactly a Pelican case, but it's a nice, yeah, nice plastic case. Just about as nice as the ones that come with most pistols. And this one comes with a, a little rubber mat. They call it an anti-vibration mat. Look at that. Reloader sharpshooter. And then in here, you get a scale, a pan, uh, the batteries. You can have, store some spare batteries, and it came with batteries, and then some calibration weights and some little plastic tweezers. This scale is crazy expensive, $84. I do not recommend this scale. The price alone makes it really quite ridiculous, but it's got some other minor problems as well. 
One good thing is you can disable the auto off. Like this one, I think you press, no, this is wrong. I'm going into calibration. Yep, I'm an idiot. Let me turn this off, turn it back on. Yeah, we press and hold tear. And right now you see that it shows zero. If I hit the mode button and scroll through, that is you can do a 60 second, 120 second, 180 second auto off, or if you set it to zero, it'll never shut off. And then you click OK and it says pass and then shuts off. And now this one will stay on forever. The main reason I bought this was, well, I had already bought the Marksman and was liking it. And I noticed that this had a feature I was specifically asking for in that it reads to 0 0.05. Instead of 0 0.02, it's 0 0.05 increments. So if we throw, yeah, let's start with a five grain check weight. Let's see if we can get it to read 0.5 off. Nope, there's seven. Here's nine. Eh, it's trying. Here's 10. Oops. All right, we'll get that one later. It's 0.5. 9.5. Okay, let's try it. Uh, dang it. Let's put it way out here to the side. Maybe we'll get a little bit of error. Nope, 19.5. 20, 39.5. Mm -hmm, almost. 59.5. Okay, I can't get the stupid thing to read. Off right. There we go, finally. So I've got 59 grains of check weights, and well, at least there for a little bit, it was reading 59.05. That is extremely useful because these scales. Like the load sensors in them and stuff, they're just not quite good enough to give you reliable readings down to 0 0.02 grains. So let me grab the 10, 10 grain check weights. So there, there's that one. You see it kind of bounce around a little bit, 10.04. If we lift it up, set it back down on there, 10.02. Now it's 9.98, 10.02. You see, like the scales are just not precise enough for 0 0.02. So this is while it's useful, it is absolutely useful, you kind of need to know that it's a little bit twitchy. Where I always thought that if they went to 0 0.05 instead, it would make for a scale that was a little bit less crazy and prone to giving you bouncing readings and stuff like that. So this scale is good. If you've got one, congratulations. You bought a pretty darn good scale. I love the 0 0.05 increments, but it's, it's not worth $84.99. It's not worth 85 bucks. So let's not spend any more time talking about it. This is also, this is a 20 gram scale, which it actually shows you the max in grains is 308.65 grains. That's, you know, that's fine for what we need in reloading the vast majority of the, of the time. But I found that, you know, the, the 20 gram scales, you've gotta be a little bit more delicate with their, you know, load sensors. Cause like the sharpshooter, or I'm sorry, the marksman, this is a 100 gram scale. So five more times, it just feels like the load, uh, the load sensor is a little bit beefier, but at the same time, it reads very accurately to 0.1 grains. No problem whatsoever. All right, here's one thing that's kind of annoying. This thing did turn itself off, and that auto off feature where you can disable the auto off, you have to do that every single time you turn it on. So if I've just turned this on and I'm about to get reloading here in a few minutes and I want to warm up my scale for a little bit, push and hold uh, mode, it says auto off and now we're good to go. So while the reloader sharpshooter has a setting that, that sticks, this guy does not. Now to finish out the true way lineup, this is another scale I bought and hopefully you'll immediately see one of the major problems. The area right here at the display is rounded. It, the glare is awful. And let me flip it on here. It's extremely hard to read, not just on camera, but in person as well. I really, really hate it. The other big problem with this one is that it's also expensive. It's $58.99, so $59. It has a 180 second auto off, three minute auto off, and you can't disable it. The display really sucks. So this one's a definitely don't buy this one either. But I'll tell you what it's really great at is that this is probably the snappiest, fastest registering scale that I tried. Like the number comes up immediately. Just very, very snappy. And it's unfortunate that you can't disable the auto off. So this exact same scale with the ability to turn off the auto plus a little less glare on the screen would be a pretty good one, but hey, it would still be 60 fricking dollars. And that's too much for us. That, it does have the adjustable feet whatever. So that's it. That's the 
the complete true way lineup that I tested. Yeah, there we are. Can't really fit them all in there right now. A little bit pricier, but all of these function really well. So let me move on to the rest of the BriFit lineup that I bought. You can see this, uh, what was it, a 50, 50 gram version. Pretty darn good. Well, this was the first one I bought, and it is a 20 gram scale that looks pretty much identical to the very expensive Sharpshooter, right? Very similar. So remember, Sharpshooter $85, this guy $17.99. So let's flip this dude on. One of my favorite things, press and hold mode, and there's our zero, or I'm sorry, that was tear, so press and hold tear. This one gives us the same, all right, and then I accidentally turned it off. All right, press and hold tear, we get the zero, and if we hit the mode button, it cycles through that same 60, 120, 180, and zero options. And that's a permanent setting. So this guy will never turn off until the batteries run dead. This thing is twitchy. Like I'd mentioned earlier about the, the 20 gram scales, like this is a very sensitive load cell, it seems like. I'm always, they feel fragile to me, the 20 grainers or the 20 gram models. But this one kind of reads a little bit all over the place. Like here's the five, it reads perfect. Lift it up, set it back down. Now it's 5.04. This one is probably the worst of any I'm gonna show you today about just kind of reading all over the place. I think now I just turned this one on and um, I haven't had it on in several hours. So there's some warm up that needs to be going on right now. I found the best performance with this one when I fired it up and let it sit for 30 minutes at least before I used it. And this one, I also found like if you go out to the edges, let's see how, how it acts for me here. So it reads a little bit light on that side. And if we go over to the opposite corner, it reads a little bit heavy. And I, I consistently found that it, you know, it kind of reads a little bit wonky out towards the corners. And they do even mention up right up here is to place objects in the center. And it's even got the little circle there to guide you. So this was the first one I bought from this company. And whenever I kind of played with it a little bit and found that it was very twitchy and like, yeah, if we just sit here watching this number, it's going to bounce all over the place just from like the you know, the vibrations from my voice. I've got the furnace turned off, you know, but there's still a little bit of air moving in here or, you know, a little bit of vibration in the table. So this one was just a little bit too twitchy and I definitely don't recommend it. it it's, it's frustrating when, you know, the number's constantly changing on you. So the next thing I bought, so that was the 20 gram, gram version. This was the 50. This is the one we've already looked at that I like. And I also bought a 100 gram version and a 200 gram version. These are all about 15 bucks a piece. What I was hoping is that as I went up, we would find one that read in 0.1 grain increments. Cause I, I really do prefer that for a general purpose scale until they start giving us 0 0.05. Well, let me, well, let me flip this. Well, this one I don't have batteries in, I guess, whatever. Uh, hang on. All right, there we go. So th these also, just like the last one I showed you, they do have the ability to turn off the auto off but these are immediately useless to us. Here's the, I'll tell you what, let's start out with a five, five grain check weight and let's put on the 0.5. It reads 5.6. So let's try that again over here on this guy. There's the five, 5.6. So there's one more grain, 6.4. These read in 0.2 increments. So it can't read 6.5. It can't read 5.5. It always rounds it to 0.4 or 0.6. So these are totally and utterly useless. We need at least 0.1 grains. So that was extremely disappointing. I had high hopes for these two, thinking they were gonna be a less twitchy version of that one I showed you previously, but they're totally useless. It's a waste of 30 bucks, but it had to be done. So BriFit, two of them that are totally useless because they read in 0.2 grains, one of them that is just way too freaking twitchy and gives readings that are constantly erratic. But as I've already shown you, this one was pretty darn good. So if you go with the Bry Fit, this is the one you want. So far, it's doing a good job. So the operation of this one really reminds me of these two that we talked about a little bit a minute ago. The seller I bought this one off of isn't selling them anymore, but this Home Geek or Home Geek brand is still available. 
If you like the ergonomics, I'll tell you what, let's just get this one out of the way. It's not even available anymore. Not to be confused with this other one that's not available anymore. Yeah, so if you prefer the ergonomics of this over this, like this is kind of a interchangeable choice. They seem to work pretty close to one another. This also has a three minute auto off and some people find that they can adjust it. Like let's press and hold tear and on my home geek, nothing happens. But some people get the 60, 120, 180 option, but there's no zero available. Yeah, if I go back to my original press and hold tear, you'll see it does. It, it gives me the 180, 60, 120, 180. There's just no zero. 30, 60, 120, 180. There's just no zero available. So three minutes is the best you can get with these. So if you remember whatever we were using, the 0 0.5 grain check weight. And this one over here doesn't, well, now it, it registered at that time. But you guys saw earlier that it didn't. It's very sticky at zero. There it went. So it's not going to pick that up. And then you take it off and now your zero is screwed up. These are not quite so bad. And these are a little bit snappier. You get readings a little bit faster and it'll reliably pick up this 0.5 grainer all day long and doesn't screw up your zero. And I used to make a really big deal out of this and I've just decided that I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore. Cause if I grab a trickler, there we go. This trickler has got some CFE 223 in it. It's a very, a very fine powder that is easy to trickle slowly. Tell you what, this is another thing I probably should have mentioned about the scales, like these clamshell, yeah, like these clamshell styles. It's terrible for trickling, right? Like uh, your pan's way over here, you basically need to trickle with your left hand. So just ergonomically speaking, these type, like the Reloader Sharpshooter and the Bryfit ones are pain in the butt. But this one looks great. And if we tear it to zero, this is where, like this one, you can go really fast, to be honest. Like we can trickle out powder just about as fast as we can and it's not gonna pick up any of it. I could continue this all day. So the scale is basically just constantly re-zeroing itself. And scales have to have a little bit of this because, well, otherwise you end up with like that, the orange one here that I was calling twitchy where it's constantly floating around and it's not automatically compensating for temperature changes or slight drafts or anything like that, where this one, it's trying too hard to stay at zero. So this is just terrible. Yeah, we drifted that guy by 6.6 .6 grains. Pretty much any scale on the table will do that. This is the worst. Like most of them, you have to, you have to trickle really slow to get it to not pick it up, but pretty much all of them can be fooled. So, if you're ever measuring extremely small things or trying to trickle from nothing, you really need to not do that. You gotta get some weight on there because here's, here's what we do. Let's take a, this is a five grain check weight. There we go, it reads 5.04. Now let's trickle slowly and see what it does. Look at that, it's picking it right up. So it's only a problem when it's at zero. A scale at zero wants to stay at zero, but once you get it off of there, it's generally pretty good. Now I went through every scale I've got with this test and I started with five and I slowly trickled it up to seven. Let me do that here. So I'm doing this slow, like over about a two minute window. Now one of the problems is a lot of the scales that automatically shut themselves off like this will auto shut off while you're doing this. Like for some reason, these small changes don't reset the auto off. All right, so there, there's seven grains. Let's empty out our powder charge and we'll see. It returned to zero. So all that slow trickling did not screw up at zero as long as I started from, you know, some amount of weight, like with starting with five grains. So there are a couple more scales that I haven't mentioned. Well, first here's this one right here. There are still a couple sellers on Amazon selling this one. This is really the only one I found that failed the slow trickle test from five grains. So there you can see I've got three or four tenths of powder in the pan already. And it's not registering. All of the others were fine whenever I did that. But this one, it was very easy to get it to screw up. So 
already in the past I've told people to avoid this scale and I would if you like this form factor go with one of the ones with the buttons straight across like that I think you'll be better off a couple of them from the reloading company so this is the little Lyman pocket touch 1500 got a fancy little touch screen and I don't have a lot to say negative about this guy. It's done a pretty decent job. And it's got that old, you know, the, the hinging cover, like the old Frankfurt Arsenal that everybody seemed to have. You know, it's, it's very similar to that one. And it works, uh, yeah, it works halfway decent. It is like it's a reasonably snappy scale. You know, you get a reading pretty quick. But it does kind of bounce around a little bit. This is one where... Like that time it reads 6.9, but if I pick it up and set it back down, yeah, it's going to make a liar out of me. Let's try that again. Yep, it's going to work perfectly now. There's 9. There's 29. There's 49. Yeah, it's really behaving itself well right now. So the Lyman might not be a terrible option for you. It does, like I mentioned, it's got a five minute auto off, which is good. Five minutes is about enough. It reads to 0.1 grain increments, which I like. And these are, the kit's I think 23 bucks right now. The problem though, is that it does come with this powder pan. And these, these are okay, I guess, but not really. They're a little bit of a pain in the butt. I prefer the ones like this or ones like this. If you have an old beam scale, these, Gold color ones used to come with beam, most of the beam scales. But if you want to just buy that pan, these are like 25 or 30 bucks if you can find them anywhere in stock. So, so not much to complain about with the Lyman. Next is the Hornady G2-1500. And this scale and like that Lyman, these are what they're selling in their press kits, I think, for the most part. So you may end up with one of these whether you wanted it or not. My biggest complaint about the Hornady is that it is the most sluggish scale I've got on the table here. Like you put something on there, it really takes it a long time to settle down and give you your reading. Like it's not the worst thing in the world. You could certainly get used to it. But if you're used to one that's a little snappier, it can, it can be annoying. So here's 57, 59, 60, 60.5. And, and this one, kind of like I was mentioning with the Lyman, you noticed several times there it was reading a tenth off whenever I put uh, stuff on there. There you go, that's 50.6, or at least it showed it for a second. And I, I haven't really given this one enough time to warm up here for this test. But all in all, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's accurate. I wish that display just wasn't quite as sluggish, but otherwise it's a perfectly usable scale. And like I mentioned earlier, with the trickle test, it works fine as long as you're not starting from zero. So I just have to like personally get over that sticky zero problem because it's present in pretty much every single scale and it's just something we've got to understand. So I think this is the last one. This is overall, this is the Gem 20 from Smartway on Amazon. This one is terrible because it has a 60 second auto off and I haven't found any way to change it. So I'm not even gonna power the stupid thing on. 60 seconds is annoying as crap. Your scale will constantly be turning itself off. That is one bad thing about the Hornady that I forgot to mention. This guy's got 120 second auto off. So two minutes, Eh, it's kind of annoying, especially when I'm kind of used to the three minutes with this one that I've been using a long time. Like I've just gotten used to, to the stupid thing staying on for three minutes and the Hornady always seems to be off whenever I need it to be on. So I think that pretty much covers it. So back to my three recommendations. Being able to disable that auto off on these is huge. I love it. Freaking love it. The form factor kind of sucks. I really don't like the lid is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get off, but I found these to be good scales. I've done a fair amount of loading with both of them and they did pretty good. I've only had this one here uh, about 10 or 12 days. So I've not got quite as much experience with it. So I'm gonna try and use it quite a bit. And if I find something bad about it, I'll make another freaking video and let you guys know. 
There are also a couple more scales I want to buy. So if any of those is fantastic, I'll make another video as well. Man, if these were just a little bit cheaper, if this stupid thing was 20 bucks instead of 35 right now, it would be an easy choice, I think. And hopefully that price goes back down. Like I mentioned, it just went back up over the last couple months, but it was 20 bucks for a long time. And hopefully it'll go back to that. I don't know, we'll see. I'll tell you one thing about this Bryfit company that makes this scale, their listings are ridiculous. For all of their different scales, they've got three different listings, it seems like. One of them says like 2019 new version, and then the other is updated version. And then there's one like 2020 version. So what I'm afraid of, as we get out and buy some of these to play around with, we're gonna find that, you know, kind of like, kind of like these old things, there's multiple versions out there that look exactly the same and some work better than others. So if you happen to pick up one of these, be sure to come back, let us know in the comments whether it's working well for you. And like I said, I have tons of links in the description if you wanna make sure you're buying the exact same listing that I bought. So I think that's where we'll leave it, folks. See you guys next time.